67 Celtic News YouTube channel. This video going to be a Celtic Girls or Celtic FC Women video. So for those who don't follow the Celtic uh, Girls, um, this video may not be for you unless you want to start following them. However, there will be a preview of the Celtic versus Falkirk League Cup quarterfinal match later on this morning. So this video is in two parts. Uh, review of Celtic's recent 4-2 away win against Montrose that puts them top of the table uh, in the SWPL and a preview of tomorrow's game against Vorksla Poltava, the champions of Ukraine in the first leg of the uh, UEFA Women's Champions League round two with the second leg also at the Excelsior in Airdrie this coming Thursday. So, before we do crack on with the actual video, please do, if you are new to the channel and you like coverage of the Celtic FC women's team, uh, or you like coverage of Celtic, the club in general, please do click that subscribe button. If you like the video, please do click the like button and also uh, comment section open, in this case, for comments regarding uh, the Celtic uh, women's side. The team, uh, my predicted lineups, and uh, the score, um, and any other related issues to the Celtic FC women side. Celtic FC women went top of the SWPL, beating uh, Montrose four two away from home. There are uh, edited highlights available through the Celtic FC. Uh, YouTube channel if you want to watch those. Um, it was uh, an interesting game. Uh, Lena Sadiku made nine changes to the team that had played at the weekend. Lisa Rogers came in in goals to replace Kelsey Doherty. Amy Richardson got her first game. Emma Lawton made her first start on the right. Kit Lafarsky came back into the team, as did Sorsha Noonan. And Celia Barclay also started out wide uh, on the right, uh, but uh, they stayed in their now customary 3 4 3 formation um, and got off to an excellent start with Sorshin in scoring in the 14th minute. Soon, soon after, Maria McEnany then scored uh, Celtic second in the 21st minute after a really nice move down uh, the right hand side and uh, McEnany had a nice easy tap in in uh, the uh, box and just before half time three minutes into added time uh, very clever shot by Sasha Noonan from the edge of the box uh, at a direct free kick um, and she hit the ball in a very acute angle over the top of the Montrose goalkeeper into the far corner. Very clever finish, put Celtic 3-0 up at half time. A little unexpectedly in the second half, the team didn't push on to score more and more goals. And indeed Montrose got back into the game with Codagoni scoring um, Montrose's first in the 61st. And then uh, Lisa Rogers being caught out by a shot from distance by Brown of Montrose in the 80th minute. Um, and so Montrose pulled back to only 2-3 down. However, Celtic pretty much went up the, up the other end. Nice uh, interchange between Morgan Cross and Sasha Noonan up front. And Sasha Noonan hit the ball. Um, the very sweet strike into the Montrose goal to put Celtic 4-2 up. Does put Celtic back top of the table, although uh, Rangers, Hearts and Glasgow City can all uh, overtake us this weekend, as they all will have uh, games in the SWPL whilst we are playing Vorksla in the 
Champions League round two. But uh, at this point, um, I think wins are more important than scoring lots and lots of goals. It would be really nice to see us scoring the amount of goals that we did last season. However, I think the the season's going to come down to our games against Rangers, home and away, times two each, um, and our further games against Glasgow City, Hearts and Hibs. I think there are now five teams in the Scottish women's game who are genuinely good. I think all of them can take points off each other. Uh, I think, uh, quite importantly, this season we've already got one win over Glasgow City. Um, and I genuinely do think that Celtic's squad depth will, in the end, see them over a team such as Rangers, Glasgow City, Hearts and Hibs to win the title. Um, but it is a very long season. And if all goes well, over the next two games against Vorksla, uh, we'll be fighting on four different fronts. Just some stats from the Celtic versus Montrose match, and then we'll crack on with a wee preview of the game against Vorksla tomorrow. So in the Montrose match, Celtic had 68% possession to Montrose Trose is 32. Shots were 31 for Celtic to 7 by Montrose. 15 on targets by Celtic, 2 by Montrose. 10 off targets by Celtic, 4 by Montrose. Celtic had 6 shots blocked. Montrose had 1 shot blocks blocked. The Montrose goalkeeper made 11 saves. Lisa Rogers didn't have any saves to make um, because unfortunately she let the 2 on targets in. And corners were 9 to nothing. This very clearly shows that Celtic were massively on top that they had 31 shots at goal um, and only four went in. Does suggest that it was a combination of some very good goalkeeping, some very good defence by the Montrose defence and um, Noonan, Lefersky, the midfielders, etc. Not quite having their shooting boots on. But I think genuinely uh, with the quality of this team and the strength coming off the bench, uh, everything is going to click and hopefully that's going to be the game on Sunday against Vorksla Poltava. So just looking at some stats regarding Vorksla Poltava. Vorksla Poltava are five times Ukrainian champions. They won the title last year, last season and the season before. Um, they have three times got into the second round of uh, in the uh, UEFA Women's Champions League. Uh, they have once got out of round two into what was then the last 32 knockout stage. That was in a year where there was just one leg games rather than um, the current format where uh, there are two legged -like games home and away with the winner of that then going into the group stage. When Vorksla did qualify at round two, there was no group stage, it was a straight knockout from last 32 down to the final. They are currently ranked uh, 29th in the UEFA rankings for uh, women's uh, teams. Uh, just uh, uh, some guidance, Glasgow City are 40th. Um, Gintra, whom we beat in the last round, 46th. Coops of Finland are 58th. We beat them in the last round as well. Um, uh, Rangers are 73rd and we are 82nd. That's based on really the fact that neither Celtic nor Rangers have much um, past experience in the Women's Champions League. We've been knocked out on a couple of occasions. Uh, Rangers were rather soundly beaten by Arsenal and Atletico Madrid earlier this season. And I would fully expect um, Celtic's ranking to go up nice and steadily uh, after this uh, thus far successful campaign and even more so if we do get through this two-legged tie uh, tomorrow Sunday and the following Thursday. Some good news is the game will be covered live on Premier Sports. Um, they're starting their coverage at uh, 11.55 with the kickoff being at uh, 12 noon. Um, and then straight after the coverage of the uh, Celtic versus Vorks La Poltava match, they'll be going then to cover the Celtic versus Falkirk 
League Cup quarterfinal. Um, and so for those who have Premier Sports, you can watch continuous coverage of the Celtic women's side leading into coverage of the Celtic versus Falkirk uh, kickoff. Uh, the women's side kicks off at 12 noon, the men's side kicks off at 3 o'clock. Um, I'm lucky enough to have uh, a ticket to go to uh, the game at the Excelsior tomorrow with my trusted assistant, Little Miss David67. I'm uh, really looking forward to hopefully a nice, comfortable Celtic win. Um, a wee bit difficult to assess Vorksla Poltava. 11 of their uh, squad are in the current Ukrainian national squad uh, for women. So obviously uh, a team full of international experience. Not all of the Vorksla players are starters for the uh, women's uh, international team for Ukraine, but they, I said, 11 of their squad are in the Ukrainian squad for women all the time. Just as some guidance, 20, uh, Scotland women's international side is 23rd in the rankings and Ukraine are 35th. Looking through their team, uh, they have several very good players, probably very important players for them in tomorrow's match will be Katerina Samson, their goalkeeper. Uh, she only joined them this year. Um, they have a very uh, highly skilled midfielder, Jana Karlinina, who is uh, one of the key members of the Ukrainian full international side. And similarly, they have a very successful um, um, striker, Roxolana uh, Kravchuk, she scored in their previous qualifying rounds um, against Riga and Ferran Schwaros. Um, and she also has scored uh, several goals for the Ukrainian women's national side as well. And so I think they are going to be, those two, Kalinina and Kravchuk, may well be um, very important players for them tomorrow. My own suggestion regarding the team uh, for tomorrow's match, I doubt that actually Yelena Sadiku is going to go for this uh, sort of more ambitious team. I suspect she probably will play things a wee bit safer. But my team suggested for tomorrow is Kelsey Doherty in goals, um, back three, um, the very trusted combination now that Chloe Craig's out for the season with a knee injury of Caitlin Hayes, Kelly Clark and Bruna Lorenko. I personally would go for out wide um, Emma Lawton because she does have that extra bit of defensive ability, but she's also got a lot of pace, a lot of strength, very creative player. I would have her out wide on the right, and I would go with extra pace with Kit Lefersky playing out on the left um, to give us more uh, attack, creativity, and also a goal threat, threat coming down the left side. I suspect that probably... Uh, Elena Sadiku will probably go with Jenny Smith on the right and Hannah Kerner on the left. That plays things a bit more safely, or possibly even Lucy Ashworth Clifford on the left. Again, and playing things that bit more safe, which is entirely reasonable for the first leg. In midfield, I'm having uh, Senior Carsons and Shannon McGregor, and just in front of them, Matil Carsons. Um, and I think there's uh, with that formation, there would be quite a lot of interchange of Matil Carsons and Shannon McGregor um, changing roles, one going a bit more further forward, one dropping back into central midfield and up front. I would have Sasha Noonan, fresh from her hat-trick against Montrose, and Amy Gallagher. Amy Gallagher really hasn't really hit the heights this season, and I think uh, she uh, would work well off of a bigger stronger, taller target player centre forward and Sosha Noonan clearly is in very good form having scored a hat-trick in round one against KUPS and hat-trick a couple of days ago on Thursday against Montrose. Very difficult as I said to predict the result but I'm personally going to go for Celtic to win two goals to one uh, and take that one goal lead into the Second leg on Thursday, by which time uh, we all will have seen 
if we've watched either the game live at uh, the Excelsior or watched it on Premier Sports, we'll have a much better idea of where Voxla, Poltava are strong and where there may be extra weaknesses. I'm sure Elena Sadiku and her team have done all the homework and have fully sussed where uh, their opponents are stronger and weaker and players to mark and players to watch out for. So that finishes things off for today's video about uh, the Celtic FC women's side. Just a wee reminder as we finish, if you are um, new to the channel and you like this video and the coverage of the women's side and the Celtic club in general, please do click that subscriber button. Um, Click the like button if you like the video and do pop your own comments regarding um, the lineup, score prediction, and any other thoughts and opinions regarding, in this case, the Celtic FC women's side. And as I said, there will be another video for the Celtic Falkirk the League Cup Cup, Cup League Cup quarter final match later on this morning as well. I'll be doing a post-match uh, reaction video for both this game against Vox La Poltava and a separate video for the Falkirk game post-match review on Monday and so until then goodbye good luck the girls on Sunday and hail hail